Welcome back to Development Book Club. Today we are continuing with King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. And today is all about El Mago, the Magician. This is the third archetype. And the energies of the magician are twofold wherever, whenever they're encountered. And that is that the magician is also, or always, a knower and a master of technology. Additionally, we spoke about ritual at the beginning of the book, and the magician is the ritual elder or shaman. The human magi magician is always an initiate of uh, ritual himself, and one of his tasks is to initiate others. He is an initiate of secret and hidden knowledge of all kinds. This is, you'll see shows up in the various incarnations of the magician. Whatever the magician's title might be like wizard or medicine man, shaman, invent even inventor, scientist, his specialty is knowing something that others do not know. And there are two current fields of study the authors bring up that are the most conducive to the magician in this balance between being a technologist and a spiritual initiatory facilitator. And those two are particle physics and depth psychology. So both fields teach us that there are things are not always as they seem in particle physics. For example, waves are, act like particles or, or like a light is a wave or a particle depending on how you look at it. And then in uh, depth psychology, the unconscious mind, the, the power and the depth of the unconscious mind is tremendous. Some stories of an apprentice magician losing control are common throughout different cultures, like Fantasia, for example, Raiders of the Lost Ark, not yet fully trained therapists doing their work, even rock musicians at, at huge concerts that become out of control. So all of these people kind of set forces off or into motion that they cannot fully contain. So think of like a riot at a concert, the Fantasia story, obviously, Raiders of the Lost Ark and therapists struggling at the beginning of their work. The magician in his fullness is, so the magician is the archetype of thoughtfulness and reflection. It is thus also the archetype of introversion. And remember the, the boy psychology version of this is the precocious child. The capacity to, to detach from inner and outer storms and to connect with deep inner truths and resources is a hallmark of the magician. And the fullest, most complete version of the magician, according to the authors, is the shaman. And the magician aims at a fullness of being in all things through compassionate application of that special knowledge and that technology. Now, the two shadow poles of the magician are the manipulator and the denying or innocent one. The manipulator is the active version, which... Think of like a propaganda minister or people that have controlled press briefings, censored news, or orchestrated political rallies. There's a lot of politics involved in the shadow side. And this is the face of the magician, the manipulator, all those things that I just mentioned. And so the man under the influence of the active shadow, the manipulator, does not guide people as the magician in its, his fullness does. He directs them in ways that they cannot see the main manipulator. He maneuvers people by withholding from them information that they need for their own well-being. So that extra secret information he has, it is, it is withheld and used to control and power over people. He charges heavily, this, this uh, manipulative magician, he charges heavily for the little information that he does have, which is usually just enough to demonstrate his superiority and his fleet of learning. Learnedness. He is not only detached, but cruel as well. And there are examples all over the place from graduate students by their professors having this relationship, clients by expensive attorneys, patients by doctors, patients by therapists, and even the authors mentioned the public at large by groups such as Madison Avenue. And for example, a quote is, I am the keeper of great wisdom and secret knowledge, a wisdom and a knowledge you need in order to become well. I have it, try to get it from me. And by the way, leave your check with my secretary on the way out. And this is, uh, you know, this is very much Greek and Plato, the sophists were manipulator shadow magicians in this model. To the extent that he hurts others with his knowledge and technology, in whichever field that may come, by cutting himself off from living relatedness with his clients and other human beings, 
this manipulator shadow magician has cut off his own soul from the rest of the world as well. The passive or the other side of the shadow is the naive or innocent one. This is a carryover from the precocious child's passive shadow, which was called the dummy, if you remember. So the innocent one wants social st the social standing of a magician and that sort of recognition and power socially, but does not want to put in the work to earn it. He will block others and seek their downfall. He's very win-lose on that side. Whereas the trickster, the child, plays his tricks in part for the sake of revealing the actual truth. The innocent one, the magician, hides the truth for the sake of achieving and maintaining his own precarious status. And while the trickster aims at the necessary deflation of our grandiosity, the little one, the shadow magician, both of them, uh, the manipulator and the innocent one, work at deflating us when such deflation is not only unnecessary, but actually harmful as well. So there's a real sort of malice on the part of the adult shadow magicians as opposed to the child shadow magicians. And the innocent one additionally has detachment and impressive behavior. His deflating remarks, hostility toward questions, even his accumulated expertise are all designed to cover his real inner desolation and hide the actual lifelessness irresponsibility from the world. <clears throat> and last section for the magician is accessing the magician. So when working with emotion, one thing we can do is separate the ego from our emotions while still acknowledging them, but not repressing them. So there's sort of a middle ground between being the victim of our emotions and repressing them. So this is done by having somebody sit down in an observation chair and as difficult emotions arise, we can imagine placing them in a stack in the middle of a room to observe them. Oh, that's anger. Or, oh, that's fear. Um, there you are. You can say, oh, there you are in fear. Like That's what you look like. So this is distancing while acknowledging and not repressing. Uh, and then when the force of the feelings has passed, we can ask our clients to banish them as, as therapists. And this exercise helps clients strengthen their connection to the magician, which is the archetype that watches and thinks. And that's what we have about the magician archetype. In the next video, we will cover the lover, which is the fourth and final of the four mature, masculine, grown-up archetypes. Thanks.